Hey all, welcome to a very quarantine edition of Content and Links. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about why the top funnel is often more valuable than bottom. So a common misconception that you hear people talk about is that they only create content that converts or, or what have you. And that's really their focus. And otherwise it's sometimes top funnel can be superfluous and not really useful for a business. And that, that both of those things can be very true but the reality is with SEO in particular, there's extra value that comes from links specifically with the top funnel that actually can make it more valuable than the bottom funnel. And the reason for that is links have their own weight and true, true monetary attachment that we can give top funnel. And also it is that top funnel kind of content that is more likely to generate links because they're further from the actual uh, conversion event. And because they're further from the conversion event, they're more likely to uh, achieve links because people are more willing to link to something that's not selling them something. So you can see that connection of a valuable thing in, in terms of link acquisition actually creates a value that otherwise, if not attached to search, would not be true. And in scenarios where top funnel isn't attached to search, it is very true that you'd rather do middle and bottom funnel content. But in this context, top funnel almost has its own cyclical effect of impacting the bottom funnel that in a way makes it equivalent as long as the bottom funnel of page is like this. So I'll explain how this is in practice. So we look at the site Credible, they're in student loans specifically, and also personal loans. And they're doing pretty well. Um, they have a pretty upward trajectory, a little volatile there, but overall probably doing pretty pretty solidly and at least feeling good about how, how they're performing um, as a business. So if we dig in specifically to their pages, you can see a variety here. And if you were a student loan competitor and you're thinking about starting, you'd be obvious to look at competitors like Incredible to see how should we prioritize our content creation strategy to think about the value of that content. So if you look at this to the surface, you'd probably go to the obvious players like personal loans, refinancing loans, student loans. Those things all factor into the equation of thinking about how to, how to generate links or about value that are obvious to build out. But from there, the equation isn't as simple. You can see some pages are 10,000, 20,000, and then you do have outliers that generate links as well, but really the traffic value equation is looking at what people are willing to bid on that same traffic. And when we think about it in context of credible, why we need to think a little bit deeper is actually the value of a link specifically to them. So if you're looking at credible, the, the way I suggest looking at this is to divide the number of linky root domains they have by the traffic value of that site. And this actually creates an equation of value per link per month for them. So in their situation, we get approximately a value of 525 per link per month. So if we believe that links are a strong ranking component, this actually puts a equivalent value because links hold up that traffic value that they've established. And it is a bit of a stretch in terms of the total, but if we also assume uh, these are more quality on average. HRS has some scraping and, and low quality stuff in there. It's probably reasonable to say a link that is quality that you generate is worth around 500 um, to this business. So if we think about that in practice, we can now put an equation behind what content that generates links would be worth. And if we think if we compare that to their current traffic value, we can see that sometimes assets that on the surface uh, might seem less valuable actually have an equatable, much more significant value. So in their instance, they have this piece on student loan debt statistics, and it just has a traffic value of 4,000. And in reality, they probably can't monetize to that degree, but it has around 100 links. So this is valuable specifically if we know this is going to power that personal loan page, the student loan refinance page, the student loan page it actually has a value much more significant than the 4,000. So in this scenario, we can actually apply that multiplier to say of 100 links, and if we assume it's only going to stay static, which is probably going to grow, 100 links times the 500, equivalently, it's around 52,000 just per month for that asset in particular. So this equation swings, and this top funnel asset actually equivalently is one of the things they should prioritize first in their queue because of the pure value of that asset. And this swings in lots of different ways. If you know something can generate 10 links, 20 links, 30 links, maybe it has some top funnel potential that is passive, this variable 
changes how you think about things as a company and how you think about top funnel period for your market, um, especially if it has additional value that, that of actually leading them through the value additionally. That's to say, that's not to say all top funnel content is just amazing in SEO. As specific to us, we have this piece on the most popular Google keywords. It kind of sort of seems like it's SEO. It doesn't have a ton of links specifically, and it's pretty useless for us, to be honest. Like this is an example of content that drives a ton of views, and we have gotten some links to it, so I wouldn't say it's nothing. But in our sector and in terms of acquiring clients, it's not actually that useful for us as a business. So the, the pure traffic, even though it's in one of our most popular pages, means this actually is that good example of top funnel content that's absolutely pointless for you and probably is not worth doing. That said, this wasn't high effort, but you kind of get what I'm putting down in that context. Compare that to our version of this exact same concept um, actually has been quite successful for us, has hundreds of links to it, actually probably does get us in front of the right person. Um, it has decent top funnel awareness. And it's going to generate links that can power our other rankings should we appropriately apply that concept. So overall, hopefully this got you thinking a little bit smarter about top funnel content specific to SEO and specific to link building in particular. You do have to understand the value of your link in your market. In some areas, this can be actually quite small. In other areas, uh, the number can be quite large and actually significantly larger than we see here in the credible example. So think about this for your own business and do that math it can start understanding why top funnel in the SEO equation actually has appropriate value and almost equivalent value, if not often larger than the bottom funnel, as long as those bottom funnel pages exist and are, are ripe to rank. So uh, thanks for watching this. I'd love to hear what you thought in the comments. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, um, and thanks for watching.